Now that we've installed the proxy server, and we've seen how we can do things like change the file cache folder from here, let's take a look at some more advanced uses of the proxy server. And to do that, we need to go into the proxy configuration file itself. Now the proxy configuration file is generally located, if you've done a default installation, of C colon, program files, team foundation server 12, version control proxy, and once you get in here, we need to drive into a little bit more detail. TFS data is where the data will be held, but we want to go into web services. From there, go again into the version control proxy, and we'll see a proxy.configuration file. We can go ahead and edit that proxy.configuration file in something like Notepad, and in here we're going to see a lot of different elements and items that we can use to make changes. So let's take a look at what some of those are. The first node to pay attention to is this servers node. Inside of the servers node, here we're identifying a single server. If we want to add more servers, we can certainly do so. In that case, all we have to do is make a copy of this server element and change it to point to another location. We may have a secondary server at secondary TFS server, colon 8080, WAC TFS, WAC NWC, or some other TPC, some pointing to some other team project collection. That's how you would add another server. In fact, you can add multiple servers to this. Another thing is the location of the cache root folder. And the cache root folder is right here. Now it's recommended in 2013 that you don't make changes here, but instead use the UI. However, you could also make changes here and it won't really hurt anything. Now in 2012, this is where you need to make those changes. Now, the next thing is to look at the cache limit policy. How much cache do we want to keep on this system? And we've got two different ways we can limit the cache. We can limit the cache as a percentage of disk space, and this is the default, and it defaults to 75% of the entire size of the hard drive. This may or may not be appropriate. You could, if you preferred, use a fixed sized base policy to limit it to 200 gigabytes, for instance, or 15 gigabytes if you wanted to. Next thing is the deletion age threshold. How long should things just hang out in the cache without really being accessed following a cleanup operation? And in this case, we've got 30 days. Next is a cache deletion percentage. And this is the percentage of the cache sides that will be freed up when you hit that limit. So in other words, if we hit 75% of our disk space, the cache, the proxy, will automatically go through and find the least used 10%, in the current case, 10% of those files and clean them up. Now, that's so that we can bump that up to a little higher number if we don't want to be constantly cleaning up, or we can leave it at 10%. By default, most of these things can be left on their own. And the last thing to look at is the statistics persist time. This is basically is how long should the proxy and statistics kind of hang out before being written to a file. Again, not widely used except for troubleshooting. The most widely used is using this to add an additional server. So at this point, we simply say file save, and we can close the proxy, and we now have a newly configured proxy. So in this demonstration, we've seen how to do some of the more advanced configurations of a Team Foundation server proxy.